We start with Bukhari, we do not know the name, the difference between Bukhari and Bukhari, and then we go to straight into Bukhari, eh? In Urdu, Bukhari means fever. He's got the, the Bukhar of Bukhari, he's got the Bukhari of the faith. And we, we hear stories of, of uh, the ulama of this deen who would not even touch the book of Bukhari without wudu. Now immediately they give a fatwa and say, where does it say that the wudu is required for touching Bukhari? The hour of my brothers doing more than what is in the fatwa is the sign of taqwa. Is to do more than what. I do have to do to touch uh, the Sahih Bukhari. Make wudu and you pray two rakat salah and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala salatul hajat to open your heart to the hadith and then you have come up to that level for and so forth and then you read Sahih Bukhari. Believe me, the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will do in kishaf of the, of the, of the kalam of his Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will be hugely different. Reading without wudu what stage and reading some hadith in English the computer. Alhamdulillah, one of the benefits is that the ilm of the deen has become even a very good thing. I am not against that. Alhamdulillah. You do not have to, to get one hadith, you do not have to do what Imam Bukhari did. You do not have to walk all the way from uh, Bukhara to Baghdad. That's one side of the story. Alhamdulillah, it's easy. But the other side of easy is that we no longer have the value for it. I'm talking about generally, I'm not talking about you people. We do not have the value for this. So we don't talk about the usul hadith. We do not understand how to come to hadith. And we just quote hadith. Mostly Tarjuma, not even the Arabic, even if we quote in the Arabic, if you haven't studied the usul, in any case it makes no sense. The beauty of Islam is the individual practice of personal piety. Believe me, my brothers, the reason I'm mentioning this is because today we live in this world where you have courses after courses are being announced. This course on Uzul Afik. Who can attend? Anybody who can pay the fees. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. I have many friends who are in the modern uh, you know, the, the, the internet dawa and all these modern conferences and whatever else and so forth. And I also go and attend some of these and I speak at some of those. Somebody once asked me, why do you go there if you have so many doubts? I said, I go there to see what's going on. And also someone somewhere should say something, what, is need, what needs to be said. So I go. But my point is this, that people now course after course, this course, that course, that course. And what is the qualification? Pay the fees. Since when is it a qualification that as long as you pay that $20 or $50 or the number of dollars is, that suddenly you can sit in a class and you who do not know the how hadith are now discussing the intricacies of the usul of hadith without any basis. How is this beneficial? I have not courses and I have even gone and sat in a couple of courses and I left midway and then afterwards we had a long discussion with the, with the teacher and Alhamdulillah and he seems to have understood but issues of the issue of fifth, Uthur of fifth. And he's talking about how do you arrive at something which is halal and halal. And you're teaching usul of fifth to someone who has, who has no basis and no tarbiya in taqwa. Nothing. They may be good people. I'm not saying they are shaitan, they are not shaitan, they are good people. But every specialized knowledge needs some foundational knowledge. And just because you understand a language does not mean that you can understand the specialized knowledge. You can't say because I understand uh, English or I know English, I'm going to read a book on surgery and after that Mr. Yavar, Yavar Bek, please come and lie down here and give me a knife and I will perform some surgery on you because I just read this book on surgery. And say, okay, what do you mean in the book of surgery? Did you ever go to medical school? Did you ever qualify? Did you, did you study under, within quotes, medical shriok? Today you ask somebody, today I smile, you ask somebody, you know, who is your chef? Under whom did you study? You say, well, ask, excuse me. Who told you that I have to become, uh, you know, go and study under some teacher? The Quran 
الانجليزي ما بدل القران نزل قال لك يا سلام القران القران الانجليزي meaning of yasal al-Qur'an. Pick it up and you do whatever you want and you read it and you take one ayah from here and you pass one istambal al-Hakam without anything. Just extract the ruling and then pass the judgment. That's the meaning of easy. Someone asked me in Australia. I, I told them, I said, yes, I agree with you. If Allah says Qur'an is easy, I can't say it's difficult. But I said, let me explain to you what is the meaning of Qur'an is easy. The person who asked me a question was the doctor. So I asked him, I said, when did you start going to school? Good Indian Pakistani tradition, he started going to school at the age of two and a half. Play school. I said, right, two and a half you went to school. Then what? Two and a half to the age of five he was in play school and, and pre-primary and so forth. Class one in five, twelve years. That's how many years now? Twelve plus three and a half, fifteen years. At the end of fifteen years, what is he? He has passed high school. After fifteen years he passed high school. Then what? Then he does two years of, three years of B.Sc. Then he does five, five years of, of medicine, MBBS. What is an MBBS fit to do? In my country, he is fit to drive a taxi. Because we graduate like 500,000 MBBS a year. So he is fit to drive a taxi cab. So then what does he do? Then he does two years of house surgeonship. So by now, how many years have we, have we done now? 15 plus 3, 18 plus 5 is how many? 23 plus 2 years house is 25 plus 2 years specialization, 27 years of learning, 24 hours full time. And then what does he get? He gets an entry level job in a hospital. He is still not a consultant surgeon. To become a consultant surgeon, he still got another 10 years to go. I said that is dunya. Compared to that dunya, this deen is easy. But if you think that this deed, the Quran is easy, means I can pick it up today and from tomorrow morning I start passing judgment, sorry. Doesn't work like that. So the maqsad of uh, one step, saying all of this is because today let us not get into this thing of thinking that the deen is so easy that anybody can learn it anyway. We have to make some effort in this deen. We have to make the effort in the deen and the effort starts with ourselves. Individual purpose, fulfilling the individual purpose. Working on our own iman, working on our own taqwa, working on our, on fulfilling the ahkam of Islam as they apply to ourselves, and then going from there into giving the dawah of Islam to the people in the best possible manner by doing things which bring about goodness in all of society. The things together, together this thing creates a situation where inshallah when we stand before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we will be counted among those who fulfill the purpose of our creation. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make it possible for us to be counted among those who he considers to have fulfilled the purpose of his creation because my brothers and sisters, that which does not fulfill its purpose is trash, it's garbage. If this light stop, stops working, if it does not give illumination anymore, what will you do? You will throw it. Why? Because it stops fulfilling its purpose. And that's the reason why it's essential for us to continue to work in order that we fulfill our purpose. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be pleased with us, to be pleased with all of you. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to, to help us to fulfill the purpose for which He created us, to make this easy for us. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make it easy for us to fulfill our prayers, to live our lives according to the blessed sunnah of His Messenger Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make this life full of barakah and full of khair for all of you and all of your families and I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that on the day when he takes us that he shows us the meaning of this ayah because the one for whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is akrab insha'Allah al is a man of the jannah insha'Allah we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us among those who will be entered in, into his jannah by his by his raham and by his karam and by ghayri hisab subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifun wa salamun ala al mursalin wa alhamdulillahi rabbil